Hello students. So in this video, we shall be discussing the solution of CM2A. The paper, although it was very easy, most of the questions were direct. But compared to all the papers, not just CM and CS, but all the papers uh, which have come in this term, uh, this was definitely the lengthiest to solve on board. There were certain questions, you know, which required. Uh, lot of calculations to be done which even on paper would have taken lot of time and to repeat that same thing on word it would have taken a lot of you know substantial time for it so uh, all of you know who are there active on social media be it whatsapp groups telegram groups or even on linkedin you would have seen that many of them struggle to complete the paper many of them even struggle to attempt you know 60 to 70 marks so the questions although were not that difficult it was of moderate difficulty only but then many students were unable to complete the paper so as with the other videos i would try to keep this video extremely short uh, most of the questions i have simply given the numerical answers for it in any video if you uh, sorry in this video if you feel that any of the solutions discussed is wrong or there is some calculation error feel free to you know uh, get back to us or uh, you can directly post your query on the youtube uh, comment section as well for this video so now let's start with the discussion for it so the first question part 1 was pretty straight forward non cessation u dash w greater than 0 risk aversion second derivative less than 0 increasing absolute risk aversion so a dash w is greater than 0 and i have also defined what is a w relative risk aversion should be decreasing so r dash w is less than 0 and i have described r w part 2 and part 3 we have been given a quadratic utility function so part 2 and part 3 are pretty straight forward direct uh, from the you know material itself part 4 was something which a lot of students struggled uh, this was again uh, even the students who were able to make the random variable properly it would have taken significant amount of time to calculate this it took me around 20 minutes to get the answer it took me more one hour to cross check i was asking my students you know what answers they are getting just to be sure you know the calculation is correct or not and almost uh, all of them were getting different answers so uh, i have solved this i didn't get much time to recalculate it uh, i was already late by a day for releasing this video so in case you feel that uh, the numerical value given at the end is wrong uh, do let us know we'll again try to check that in the coming few days and give you the correct solution if at all there is a mistake for same so this part 4 was exactly that type of question which you know i uh, requested all students to keep in mind in my video for preparation or exam strategy you shouldn't have what sentimental bhavuk nahi hone ka tha is question mein it's five marks it looks like it is very much solvable especially for those who you know who were able to write down the random variable properly but it would have taken lot of time it would have consumed lot of time and energy and still given the enormous calculation required i am you know pretty sure that most of you wouldn't have even been confident i am myself still not confident you know what I, what i have done is right or not i have solved it on paper it looks right to me but then again there might be some or the other mistake so this was again that question five marks which ideally you know you should have left considering the amount of time it would have took so um, on inquiring with my students uh, it took them around you know 20 to 40 minutes to just do this part on board because this question first you need to solve it on paper it's very difficult to write all the terms on board visualize it we are totally you know uh used to doing it on paper so first to do it on paper then you would you know give the steps uh, on word some of you i have seen the answer scripts of some of the students so they have simply uh, not given any steps and just the answer so the institute might give them full marks if the answer is correct keeping in mind that the paper was really lengthy but then uh, they are correct on the part as well if they you know deduct certain marks for not writing any steps because if you just write a single line and after that there is tons of calculation required and you just write uh, you know give the final answer so institute is well within its right to deduct some marks for it whether they do it or not that is something we'll know once the examiner report are out 
so this is the solution for part 4 the first thing which i always ask my students is to define the random variable you do that and half the question is already done so let x denote the total cost of claim that is for both the contracts combined so each policy in the question it has been mentioned that a claim of 100 would be there and there's a 10% probability of a claim both the claims uh, or should i say both the contracts are identical and independent so first is you know both of them claim individually they have probability of 1% so both of them make a claim would be uh, sorry individually they have 10% so both of them make a claim would be 10% into 10% that comes out to be 0.01 i prefer to write it 1 by 100 you could have also write 0.01 whichever way you are comfortable one of them make a claim so the probability of it would be 2c1.9 into 0.1 the first can make a claim the second cannot the first cannot make a claim the second can and finally none of them make a claim so the amount is zero with probability 0.9 square which is 81 by 100 so this is my random variable denoting the total cost of claim for the insurance company initial wealth is given to be 250 let us denote p to be the premium for one single policy so before writing this policy that is before selling this policy or entering into this contract the insurer's wealth was 250 after entering it it would have 250 it would receive two premiums in a year from two contracts and let x be the total claim amount random variable so this is the total wealth which the insurer would have and now obviously this is a random variable since we have x here which is a random variable so to find the premium which the insurance company should charge u of 250 should be expected value of utility of 250 plus 2p minus x now u250 is basically w minus dw square d is given to be minus 0.001 you can also write this as 1 by 1000 so this comes out to be 187.5 this random variable 250 plus 2p minus x so this would be either 2p plus 50 that is when x is 200 this is when x is 100 this is when x is 0 and now the expected value of this basically comes out to be 250 plus 2p minus x so this entire thing is say w wealth so it's basically what w minus dw square so w minus d w square 1 by 100 is the probability that w takes this value 18 by 100 is the probability that w takes this value and 81 by 100 is the probability that w takes this value 250 p plus 250 so i haven't really given the entire solution for it it took me around a page or so to do it simplifying and equating this to 187.5 we get premium to be 10.15 correct up to two decimal places part 5 is basically we need to comment so you would see that for an individual policy holder uh we basically have what uh, 100 rupees a claim amount would be given and 10% is the probability so the expected value of claim comes out to be 10 now ideally if you assume policy holders to be risk covers they would be willing to pay more amount of money than the expected cost of claim so that they can uh, you know uh, they don't have to face the risk they can transfer the risk to the insurance company so this value 10.15 looks you know pretty reasonable So this was the first question although it was easy but part 4 was something which required a lot of calculation and doing that on word it would have you know taken even a mental toll on students they are doing they are getting a wrong again they are doing so few students did actually spend one hour on this so the first question you spend one hour on five marks so there as it is you know your uh, confidence takes a big hit so these are the type of questions if you practice really well you would be able to understand just by you know writing when i wrote the equation for it i knew okay d w minus d w square we need to square simplify it would have really consumed lot of time i would have actually left it had i been giving the exam and come back later towards the end for it because of five marks spending any time more than 10 minutes that to at the starting of the examination would not really be you know uh, something which i would advise for question 2 so we have a share price it follows geometric drawn in motion 
it was a pretty direct straight forward question some of them did uh, you know commit calculation mistakes so the answer for part 2 is this is basically my surplus 1 lakh s4 minus 1 lakh 50000 the price of share today was 1 so if the person invests 1 lakh today it basically can buy 1 lakh shares so this comes out to be 1 lakh standard deviation s4 which comes out to be 79219.65 it's rounded off to two decimal places part 2 was what are the points they should keep in mind so the cost first of all if the ceo wants to uh, ensure that it at least has 1 lakh 50000 so the cost of buying appropriate puts to hedge against it then the regulatory requirement so all these uh, companies the senior management they are uh, you know they need to follow the appropriate regulatory requirements of the country or their stock exchange when it comes to investing or trading in the own company shares there are a lot of restriction it varies from country to country then the effect on share price now if we see logically that a management is buying puts so although it's trying to protect itself but it signifies what that that person might be unsure they uh, you know the ceo might think that the prices may go down in future so if they are buying puts of it it kind of can send a wrong signal to the investors you know or the CEO is not very confident with regard to the company prospects and therefore the share price and finally the availability of put options of appropriate strike price and duration the CEO uh, is looking for a time period of 4 years so we need to see whether you know options of 4 years are actually traded or available uh, to be you know bought or sold in the particular market or not then uh, whether the required strike price whether options of that strike prices are available or not so on it was a two mark question four things so even if you would have written the points you should have got so moving forward the third question so these are the answers for the third question 1.4 uh, different students may get slightly different answers depending on how they have rounded off d1 and d2 uh, since the paper was absolutely long so uh, i would you know in retrospect you know i could have suggested you all to you know just round up to two decimal places and get the answer instead of interpolating and getting the value for it so part 2 3 4 are direct book work uh, how the different factors affect the option prices and part 5 i was getting 3.96 by applying the put call parity fourth question this was uh, one of those questions which quite a uh, you know a lot of students simply left it or they weren't able to work exactly you know how this would work this was slightly different question than what is asked but then well prepared students should have been able to you know solve it so this is the solution first part probability of no default 0.95 cube next part to find the expected uh, the rate of interest which the company the bank should charge is it intends to get a expected rate of return of 10% so 10000 1.1 cube is equal to it receives an amount of say 10000 1 plus i cube with probability that it does not default 0.95 cube it will get zero if it defaults so this term will be zero solving this i would be getting as 15.79% up to two decimal places part 3 10000 now here i am working with present value you know you could have alt alternatively work with uh, accumulated values as well it would have given exactly the same answer so i would get 8000 if the, the person defaults in the first year amount probability of default discounting factor of one year amount probability of default in second year that is in first year it does not default second year it does 1.1 square third year defaults it does not default so i have written down the individual values so that you all can you know just uh, refer to it and see if whether you have performed any calculation mistake or not or whether there is any calculation mistake on my part so that it can be you know rectified pretty quickly so the final answer is coming out to be 12.88% part 5 run off pretty straight forward you could have used uh, excel to aid your calculations but yes you had to show the steps but um, honestly i would have suggested that you know you had used excel for the calculation part you can show down the steps ki how the different values of the columns are calculated 
by using a simple single formula and for the calculation part instead of doing it mechanically yourself on calculator you could have used excel so 1690 is the answer that was coming it might vary a bit depending how many you know uh, terms you use for development factor that is up to in three decimal place four six how much did you round off if at all you did so on so all of these would be you know accepted in the examination some form of rounding is absolutely fine question 6 again a straight forward question only 1963 hedging portfolio that is opposite of replicating will have minus 446 shares and invest 9545 Part three, one point zero seven one. This is the part four. I have used these values of D one and D two. Part five and six are nothing but comment based. Question seven. Part one and part two were direct book work. The value of the option was coming out to be four point four two. Here the values of Q1 and Q2 would have been different due to different values of U and D. So the price at the first branch, at the first node, at time one was 10.975, and at the second it was 1.146. For the fourth part, the replicating, the stock was coming out to be 0.702, and cash was coming out to be minus 9.596. Question eight, Ruben theory. Again, few of the students, especially ones you know who uh, have studied for CM two before CS two, so they struggled in this since application of uh, reinsurance, risk model, compound random variable. You could say these were involved. So many students struggled. So that is why you know in general I suggest that students should appear or should study CS two first before CM two. Few of them having strong finance background who have done MBA in finance. or who have studied these topics in college in financial economics for them it's fine they can appear for cm2 before cs2 otherwise as a thumb rule i generally suggest you know study cs2 before cm2 because we need concepts of reinsurance random variable uh, risk model especially for ruen theory even for other chapters we need the concept of stochastic process markov chain markov jump no although not it is asked every time in the paper but then it might you know uh, get us so we should be prepared for all these cases so it's always better that you know you prepare for cs2 first before cm2 so first two parts were direct book work part 3 i was getting the answer of 2500 and standard deviation of 1286 part 4 0.002 was the probability of ruin which we had to calculate part 5 was the comment part finally ninth one Again, pretty easy question, straightforward. One plus j to the power n. Variance S n is given. Need to multiply by five thousand amount which has been invested to find the mean and the standard deviation. Part three to find the probability. This is coming out. I have assumed or uh, rounded off this value till two decimal places. If you interpolate, you would get a slightly different answer that is more accurate and correct. I have used this. i always say you know to interpolate but because this paper was lengthy well prepared students you know should have anticipated this and cut down on the time on performing interpolation at various places you have to calculate the values of cdf so using interpolation would have been you know fairly time consuming part 4 is basically my semi variance since this is being a symmetrical distribution uh, it is nothing but half of variance and part 5 it would be less likely hope that you all found this video useful uh, we shall be releasing the video for solutions of cm2b tomorrow